Welcome, my name is Vishal Tekshanani. Today I'm speaking to Kevin Gallagher, the CEO and Managing Director of Santos, and we're going to talk about the energy company's full year results, its appetite for further M&A, and Kevin's take on the oil price. Kevin, it's so great to have you here again. How are you? Great, thank you, and it's great to be here, Vishal. Great. So Kevin, um, firstly, congratulations on a set of record full year results. Yeah. Analysts, including RBC and City, said it was a good beat. Mm. Tell us about some of the conversations you've been having with investors on the back of the earnings announcement. Well, look, I, I think it's pleasing to see that investors now uh, really understand the core asset strategy that we've been talking about over, over the last two years. Um, and and they, they are pleased to see that it's yielding results and we're seeing the very strong cash flows coming back. Uh, uh, from those core assets or coming out of those core assets. And so generally it's been a very easy and, and pleasant uh, 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 and enjoyable process this year going around updating our investors um, with the focus largely turning to growth. Mm. Um, and, and so it's been very important for me to, to continue the message around discipline and focus on cash flow generation, but also to update our investors on our growth plans, which are very exciting. So let's delve into the detail of your growth ambitions, mm. Kevin. You've got five long life core assets. Tell us about how you're prioritizing investing in those assets. Well, I think first of all, um, it's important to understand that our, our core asset strategy is a strategy that's focused on brownfield upstream projects um, and tying them into an, uh, existing infrastructure positions. And why that's important is because that's a lower cost, higher return in capital strategy. Um, because the, 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 the huge capital investments to build the LNG facilities and the gas plants mm. and the major infrastructure has already been done. And so our strategy is about focusing around those core assets, looking for new growth opportunities to tie back in to that, that infrastructure. And typically that will deliver higher rate uh, returns on, on those projects. Now the good thing is that around all of those assets, whether it's the, the, the onshore assets on the east coast of Australia, our, our assets in P&G, um, offshore Darwin, and now the west, west in, in Western Australia, we have very significant material uh, growth projects underway, either in feed or, or certainly progress, gr progressing towards feed and final investment decisions. And what we are really excited about that over the course of the next 18 to 24 months, as we progress those projects, we, we should be in a position to convert around 300 million barrels of resource to reserves as we sanction those projects. Yeah, wow. Okay, okay. So you've got quite a lot of opportunity in mm. the pipeline. And tell us about inorganic opportunity. So you ended the year with yeah. more than $3 billion of total liquidity. You acquired Quadrant late last yeah. year. Is there the prospect of more M&A given where your balance sheet is now? Well, look, I think first of all, what I would be, what, what I think is really important to clarify is that we will always look for organic and inorganic opportunities within the, um, the, the confines of those five core assets. So there's going to be no big step out and adding a sixth, a, a sixth or a new asset to our portfolio. Quadrant was a case in point. We were already in those assets and our partner and operator Quadrant um, was really looking to sell and so or the owners were looking to sell. And so it made sense for us to uh, acquire those assets. And that's been a very successful acquisition so far. We're well on track to, to meet the uh, targets we set for ourselves for in, uh, uh, integration efficiencies. Um, and of course, with that has come some really exciting growth opportunities like the very exciting Dorado oil project. Around the rest of our portfolio, it's really bolt-ons. And, and we're looking at farming opportunities in P&G, uh, onshore CSG ads in Queensland to help us um, fill up uh, or, or take advantage, if you like, of the spare capacity in the LNG facilities whilst organically exploring to build our inventory of, of, uh, of gas uh, opportunities on the East Coast. Okay, okay. So something investors have clearly been very delighted mm. about is that you've reinstated your dividend. Yes. And um, uh, where to from here for the dividend? And uh, if I dare ask, let's say, um, the energy pr oil prices hold up, your free cash flow uh, expands. Yeah. Um, would can shareholders expect the prospect of a capital return or uh, buyback if you can't find anything to buy? Well, look, I mean, I think first of all, the, the next five, seven years has very significant growth uh, for Santos. We have, we have publicly gone out and stated that we expect to take our production um, to greater than 100 million barrels by by 2025. Now that's almost double what our previous year's production was. So, yeah. so it's a very significant growth. Uh, and the good news for our investors is that 
from our, our, our current asset portfolio and the cash flow generating nature of that portfolio, we will be able to fund that growth out of cash flows uh, at an oil price of around $65 uh, through that period. So that's a very strong place. We've got a very strong balance sheet to uh, leverage off. And you saw us use that in 2018 um, to, to, to successfully acquire the, uh, the quadrant business in, in the West Coast. So the, the good news about the dividend is that uh, although I was a CEO that recommended to our board to cut the dividend in 16 in order to fix the balance sheet, uh, I'm really pleased that we brought it back now. Um, and, and we brought it back. We believe it's a sustainable dividend. And even during that growth period, we aim to be uh, continuing to uh, reward our shareholders for their, their, their faith in the plan uh, by paying that dividend through that period. All right, excellent. And lastly, Kevin, always love hearing from you, your uh, outlook for the oil price. What's happening in the oil market this year and what does it mean for oil and gas prices? Well, look, I mean, I think first of all, um, it's been incredibly volatile. I mean, it was, it was interesting watching it go up into the mid 80s in 2018 yeah. around October time and then by Christmas it was in the low 50s and I think that's a great reminder to all of us that this is a commodities business and it's a cyclical uh, uh, industry that we're in. Um, so look I think in reality we're probably in a 60 to 80 dollar world for, for some time um, however Santos is not focused on oil price we're focused on cost of supply and we believe that our competitive advantage uh, will be realized by having the lowest cost of supply in the markets in which we operate. And so we'll continually focus on driving that down. That positions the company then to be very responsive and be able to generate a lot of cash flow when the oil price is high. And, and our guidance for 2019 is that uh, our free cash flow break even oil price that we are operating our business on will be around $35 US. Um, and for every $10 the actual oil price is above that number, we should generate around 300 to 350 million US dollars in free cash flow. So it's a very cash flow positive portfolio. All right, excellent. Kevin, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your insights with our shareholders. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. No worries. I hope you found this video informative. Now, please remember what we talked about today isn't investment advice or a recommendation to transact in Santos's shares. If that's something you're thinking about doing, please do your research and please consider seeking financial advice. My name is Vishal Texanlani and I'll see you next time.